In today's video, we're going to be checking out the Dewey VMAX. It's got 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. It also features a whopping 108 megapixel camera sensor on the back. So without further ado, let's get into it. And first things first, we're greeted with the phone itself. Very similar to some of the fat phones that we've looked at, this guy is thick. Like, just look at that sucker. The thing is massive. Like, I don't even know how you'd put that. You'd put that as a brick. I don't know why phones are trending towards this, but um, because of the battery life, I'm sure. Like, what do you even take this on? Now, in the past, the Doogie phones have also struggled, at least the newer ones, have struggled with um, the camera quality. So we'll be comparing this with a bunch of different cameras today. Um, everything up from the iPhone down to the um, uh, some, some other models, um, some very similar models to this. Um, I think you have the Ocatel versions and stuff. Um, but this features that whopping 108 megapixel camera, which surprisingly it's heavy, but it's not as heavy that I'm used to. Um, the quality wise, everything does seem to feel like at least plastic. So um, yeah, I think it's best we start the sucker up and uh, see what it looks like. What else do we get in the box? On the front of the box here, you have this. You have the screen protector. You have the screen protector that you're provided. The user manual. And it looks like a charging brick with USB-C. And a cable. So I think that's uh, everything for that. Let's get setting this up and uh, we'll get using it. So I've got the phone here. Um, we're going to go through, take a couple pictures, see what we have in terms of picture wise. I've got this, um, 104 megapixel, uh, camera. Just do the same pictures as we did last time. And also go through and take some videos as well. Kind of see what we have in terms of video. So this video, I have bugs, don't follow me. Um, this video is 4K. We can zoom in and get this close up. Take a look at this different bokeh. There you go. But yeah, you can take a look. We climb around here, look around here, take our video. So settings wise, we can do HDR video. And also let me make sure these video settings are set up properly. So we got HDR photos. Take a couple more pictures. So I think I have taken all of my pictures now. So I think we are, um, I think we're all good. So I used this for a little bit, and uh, I just wanna go over a couple impressions that I have. So compared to some of the phones that I've looked at previously, specifically the Ocatel ones, um, I find that this one is a little bit thicker in my opinion. The camera on here, I think benefits from at least having more megapixels compared to some of those phones. A lot of those phones are around 64 megapixels, whereas this one, of course, is a little bit higher and then of course when you take these pictures the phone doesn't have to necessarily do so much software work um if i come over here and i take like a couple pictures and stuff um open this up real quick take a picture of some leaves and stuff it does really good i find so if i take a picture of this let's see hdr nice good picture um but i find that the 108 megapixel 108 megapixels does a lot and it's actually something I really enjoy using. Overall though, I think the camera is pretty solid. Battery life on the sucker isn't pretty, with all large phones, um, I'm gonna call these thick boys because that's what I really like to describe them as. Um, they have really, really solid battery life. Um, this is definitely something you could take on hiking trips or whatever, um, and especially like, uh, especially if you're going somewhere. Um, the waterproofing is nice. Um, I have yet to test the speakers. Those are usually the worst on these phones, um, specifically because they have to make them waterproof, which by, by nature isn't bad. Um, it just, it also results in having, of course, 
the need for a, um, well, really, uh, yeah, crappy sound. Speakers, you've got some perforation on the top, perforation on the bottom. We'll have to check that out in a sec when we get back upstairs. Um, but overall, it's pretty hefty. Definitely something you wouldn't want to have above your head while you're working. Um, but picture quality, just going through and taking some pictures. Screen brightness occasionally is a little difficult to see, especially in the sun. This is some really bright sun right now. And, uh, you yeah, know, it's a little hard to see. So to compare this to the Arctel phone, you've also got some larger... You've got a larger camera itself, um, the 64 versus the 100, 108 megapixel camera um, lends itself to, of course, some better detailed pictures. I actually found that while I was expecting this quality to kind of decrease the more I zoomed in, while that was the case, there was still a definite, definite uh, like pixel increase, and you definitely could notice more detail with the more megapixels, which sometimes with the small sensor, large megapixel cameras, you actually can't really get that much of a productive increase. So I was very happy with the final result, at least with these pictures. Yeah, but there's lots to talk about here and I'm actually kind of like really happy with at least the picture and the camera quality, um, especially uh, some of the close-ups. There's not really a dedicated macro lens, but I do find that like the picture actually does look pretty good uh, from close-up. Um, and comparing it to a bunch of the other pictures that I've taken on some of the other phones, um, this one's actually pretty solid uh, in terms of that regard as well. This definitely does feel, at least a look, very similar to the Ocotel phone that we've looked at previously. Um, and I find that like the case that it comes in, or at least the, the, the build of this, the build quality, lends itself to being pretty durable. A lot of rubber, um, a lot of like extra bulk on here, um, which, I mean, it definitely does fit the, the, I guess, the vibe of a generic rugged phone. Overall, I've been holding this for like five minutes, right? And my hand's already kind of getting tired. This definitely weighs a hefty bit more um, like than an iPhone or something that you might be used to. Obviously, if you, this is your first rugged phone, I just make sure you keep that in mind is that this, these are heavy. Um, this is any different than all the other ones that we've looked at. It's just very heavy. Um, Akatel made a first one. Uh, it was one of the first ones that we looked at. And they sent me another one. And then this is the third kind of rugged phone we've looked at. It's pretty, pretty hefty. Um, this whole gen genre of phones is pretty hefty. Um, just something to keep in mind. Overall though, button placement I find is pretty um, enjoyable uh, and honestly makes pretty much solid sense. Uh, if you take a look here, you get the two buttons on the side, um, which is perfect placement for your thumb, and then your middle finger kind of ends up being there if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, um, I mean, it's not particularly bad either. Um, it's just the, the, I hold my phone like that. So obviously it's, it's a little bit more of a stretch if you're left-handed. I'd, I'd say it's definitely more of a right-handed oriented phone if I had to say that. Anyway, uh, I think that concludes everything I want to talk about for the most part. So, um, yeah, let's head back upstairs, test some of the other features inside when they're out of the bright sun. So, I think it's probably best to talk about this sucker some more. So, after reviewing a lot of the footage, I want to kind of talk about some stuff in conclusion. I was really, really impressed by the picture quality on this phone. Um, the picture quality on here with the large sensor is just phenomenal. I think that the, I really think that the quality that came out of there, at least in the light, highlight situations, is really solid, um, takes really good advantage of the megapixels on there. Um, some of the algorithm smoothing is a little, when you start zooming in, is a little, uh, not a big fan of, but it looks like the images are really solid, something you could easily recrop, throw up as a monitor, background, etc. Now, the other thing, though, is this sucker has the video function. Um, standard 4K video, and I think that that's kind of a necessity now, especially with a lot of the, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the phones now, I think that's a pretty much bare minimum that it has to shoot 4K. Um, there's, you know, people talking about 8K, etc. You know, it has to shoot 4K. The 4K that came out of this phone, um, basically made me look at it and go, uh, let me check to make sure it's 4K. Um, specifically, the biggest issue for me was that the quality that came out of here was highly, highly, highly smooth. It looked like it was almost AI upscaled is what I would describe it as. It was upscaled from 1080p um, to 4K from with AI. Uh, flat out, I, I couldn't, I, I like, I literally thought that um, this is probably the worst 4K that's come out of a phone that I think I've seen in probably like seven, eight years. Um, flat out unusable in any right. Uh, it's, it's, it's bad and I don't know uh, like I checked my settings, make sure I had things enabled. The 4K that comes out of this thing is bad. And I can't 
say, you know, if you're doing pictures, phenomenal. But I just don't understand how you go from getting really, really solid pictures, which arguably is more of a, especially with the larger sensors, you can kind of get away with less processing power um, when you're looking at details and stuff like that. Versus like the video has to take advantage, at least if you're using the main sensor, there is software that has to go behind to combine like four pixels, eight pixels, etc., into one pixel for the 4K. Because you're not going to shoot whatever nine, 12K pretty much is what you're shooting at if you were to shoot at like raw native sensor size. So yeah, there's no way you would actually shoot that. So you downscale it. And I think the problem is the way that it's downscaled is um, it loses like all of the detail. The reason why I'd say it looks like AI is because like if you look at my face right now, this camera is a dedicated film camera. It's got a you know, a sensor, a large sensor, it's that all that light comes in and then you see all these details. But like the fact that like if you were to look on my face, like the marks on my face, all of that just kind of gets blushed out. It looks like it's almost got some extensive AI filtering going on, which really just looks like AI upscaling. And I don't, like it's missing the detail that would be there. Um, specifically on the video that I took the focus motor on the, uh, on my camera rig here, that the DJI logo is completely like a blur. And that's not something that is, you would at least be able to tell what it was in any other system whatsoever. So I just, I, I, it blows me away that the camera quality is so phenomenal, yet the p video quality is horrendous. Um, overall, other than that, I don't think there's much issue than that. I do need to remember to do the audio test because that was another thing that I have an issue with these phones. So the thing I will say though is it's it's very mushy. Um, I will give this credit where credits due. The audio on this is a lot better than like at least the Ocatel phones that I've looked at. Um, specifically, it at least sounds uh, it's still mushy, but it's not as bad. Instead of being like a two out of ten, if a one out of ten, it's probably closer to a four or a five, where I'd say it's manageable. Um, there is, as I said, no bass. It's all very, very mushy. Now slide the ball between one foot and the other. Yeah, no, it's it's very mushy. Um, a lot of the audio on here, at least these speakers, while they are loud, plenty loud, um, it's very much mushy, and you're not going to get that kind of quality that you're looking for, at least generically, natively on the phone. You're going to have to get some type of speaker, which, as I said, I find that these cameras, these these rugged phones, uh, by making the speakers you know, more protected, more waterproof. It, of course, makes them sound much worse. Um, so, that being said, um, HDMI port on the back uh, suffers, of course, from, you know, if you have a large HDMI plug, or what am I saying, HDMI? USB-C USB -C port on the bottom suffers from having um, a very narrow band that you can actually fix fit, so you can't use any, like, USB connectors from other phones you may have or other products that have a large you know, basically anything that goes from the metal, sometimes they have like a little bit of plug, a little bit of like plastic on there. Um, yeah, this is very thin. You're not going to be able to fit any, you're going to pretty much only going to be able to use the adapter that comes in the box. Um, yeah, any other notice? There's a clip. This is standard. I've seen the clip on the bottom for a couple of times now on some different phones. Um, yeah, so that pretty much concludes my review. Uh, I'll include a link to this in the description if you want to take a look at it and buy it. Um, yeah, but thank you very much for watching. Um, hope you have a wonderful day. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.